Don't worry, I fixed your problem. Okay, thank you, Sister Emily. April didn't refuse, as it was indeed inappropriate for her to keep wearing pajamas. When she went back to the guest room to change clothes, she found that all the clothes were brand name pieces. Even the shoes were from Louis Vuitton. After changing, she came out of the room. Aaron raised his head to look at her, eyes glowing. Sister Emily covered her mouth while laughing. I was so blind before. How could I not notice that April is as pretty as a star? Sister Emily, please stop making fun of me. April pulled at her shirt, then looked at Aaron and said, Mr. Bennett, these clothes are too expensive. I'm glad you're aware of that. Aaron smiled and responded with, You broke my jacket before, so you already owe me over a hundred thousand. With these clothes, you now owe me about two hundred thousand. You can pay me back bit by bit, but if you can't afford to pay your debt, feel free to sell yourself to me. April's face blushed. The last sentence is the point, isn't it? She asked through gritted teeth. So you want to sell yourself? Aaron nodded. I don't, she said. Aaron chuckled and said, I read a book recently. It says women never say what they mean. April felt like he was driving her crazy. She didn't respond to him. Instead, she focused on breakfast. Before she finished breakfast, she got a call from Winnie. April, I didn't go back to school last night, but this morning I found that in the group chat of our school and WeChat and in the forums, people are all saying you're a thief. How did this happen? I've sent some screenshots to your WeChat. Check them now. April hurriedly opened the WeChat app on her phone. She found that some people had taken pictures of her being taken away by police. The pictures were now spreading all over the school. Instantly, her heart sank. Things had become like this in just one night. Her enemies didn't even give her any breathing space. Judging by the current situation, soon enough, the whole school would know that she was a thief. No one from the film industry would hire her. Even worse, she might be expelled from school. Abruptly, Aaron reached out a hand to take her phone away. He spent a while looking at the pictures, then put the phone down and said blandly, Stop looking at your phone. Finish the breakfast first. I'll fix your problem. April paused briefly and asked, How? Aaron turned to say to Derek, Get my computer. Derek soon brought his laptop to him. He turned it on and found the form of Langford College of Communication. It was pretty obvious that April had been quite famous in her school as the entire forum was discussing what happened last night. He quickly browsed the comments of some people. At 1001 Nights. Oh my, I can't believe April Kennedy would do something like this. I saw her as a pure and noble fairy. If I knew what she was really like, I'd have offered her money for sex. At honor of kings good good good. So disgusting. And she made herself look so virtuous in front of us. At pa pa pa. I wonder how they recruit students. How could they admit such a disreputable thief? At I'm gonna be rich. I heard that she had pulled some strings to transfer to our school. Some people say that she often went to Professor Connor's home, and every time she visited Professor him, Mrs. Connor wasn't home. Perhaps she slept with him to get this opportunity. The more comments Aaron read, the darker his face became. Even he couldn't bear reading the students' dirty language. So without a doubt, April would have a hard time reading them. He pondered shortly, then spent a while typing with his slender fingers. About ten minutes later, he turned off his computer and said to April, Don't worry, I've fixed it for you. How did you do that? April asked. She had only read a few lines from the screenshots that Winnie had sent to her. She knew that Winnie must have avoided the worst comments to protect her feelings, but she could imagine how bad it could be. After all, back in Lukesville, after her father went to prison, she had read millions of insulting comments about herself from the forum at the school. Even her best friends tried hurting her. It was the first time she'd experienced something like that. She nearly collapsed. What was worse was that no one was there to help her. But now she was much stronger than before. She was still afraid, but she wouldn't allow herself to show her fear. At this juncture, when Aaron said, Don't worry, it was akin to him holding out a lamp in the pitch dark, and his warmth and light engulfed her immediately. It's simple. I posted another thread on your school forum while posing as an insider. I said that you were dating a handsome young rich man, and I also added that he owns a listed company and drives you around in his six million US dollar luxury SUV. Why would you have to resort to stealing if you have such a rich boyfriend? Also, I said you didn't tell anyone about him as you wanted to keep a low profile. I already texted Marvin, and he will be enlisting the help of hired commenters to repost the thread. Tell me, isn't the story convincing? April stood silent for a while before stuttering. 
This idea isn't too bad, but why do I feel so uneasy? Don't be uneasy. I can lend myself to your aid for a while. Aaron gave her a sexy smirk. His smile was dazzling. Mr. Bennett, I'm okay with this plan. April chewed on her sandwich hesitantly. But do you actually have a $6 million SUV? Aaron raised both his brows. Who says I don't? I just got one a couple of days ago. I'll drive that later. April was in a daze holding the sandwich in her mouth. As she stared at Aaron with bright eyes, she realized that Aaron's description of her imaginary boyfriend was practically tailored to his own profile. Meanwhile, Aaron was having a joyous morning as he sipped his coffee. After the incident of driving his sports car in the rain, he vowed never to drive another sports car again. He would be driving SUVs for their dates from now on. It was what he was good at, and it made him look manly, unlike the frivolous Richard. After ten minutes, Aaron rolled up and parked a large SUV in front of April. Don't just oogle at the car. Hop in, Aaron waved to her. April pulled open the door and used a large amount of strength to pull herself clumsily onto the car seat. I can't blame her, although there's a footstep. It is her first time riding such a magnificent car. It's hard to look graceful doing that, Aaron thought. Mr. Bennett, if someone saw me getting out of this car, it'll be an ugly sight to behold. There's no way I'll be able to climb down elegantly, April said bravely. This wasn't a cliché TV series after all. Aaron paused before saying, I'll carry you out then. April nearly choked. That's not what I'm suggesting. Let's do that when we reach the school. April was silent and made a face. What kind of expression is that? Are you unwilling? I'm just trying to help you, you know, Aaron said. No, thank you. April managed to sputter out. Hmm, you can smile if you're grateful. All right, if your roommate asks about us, you have to insist that I'm your boyfriend. I'm not sure about your roommates other than Winnie, but we have to play it safe, you know, Aaron reminded her. All right. The situation was as it was, and April had to go along with the plan. Watching the tall man beside her basking in the morning sun, she felt protected and safe. It was the first time in two years since her father was incarcerated that she felt this way. How about this? I'll pay for your food from now on. About 20 minutes later, April got another call from Winnie. April, what's going on? Some people in the forum are saying that you had a tall and handsome and super rich boyfriend this whole time. They're making it sound real. April told her about the plan. After hearing that, Winnie chuckled and said, It seems that as long as Mr. Bennett is there... I don't need to head back to school in a hurry. Spend more time with your boyfriend. I'll be fine, April said, then hung up the phone. Does Winnie really have a boyfriend? Asked Aaron. Yeah. Well, Aaron nodded and continued. Poor Marvin. On her way back, April got calls from Marianne and Annie and answered their questions vaguely. After arriving at the school, Aaron drove directly toward the girls' dormitory. However, before the car got near to the building, he saw a lot of people standing in that area. As the car couldn't get through the crowd, he had no choice but to park by the roadside. As April opened the car door, Erin suddenly walked over and put an arm around her waist. I can get off. Before she finished, he carried her out of the car. You're light as a feather, he said after carrying her down. Is it because you spent all your money to buy me that jacket? April thought for a moment, then said, It was my fault for ruining your jacket. It looks like I should take the responsibility. How about this? I'll pay for your food from now on. April gave a start. She was often shocked by his words, even though he was less sharp-tongued than before. I don't think you need to do that. I can still afford to eat. Really? People in the forum said that you were poor and that you ate steamed bread and tofu every day. How can my woman be so poor? April pouted, thinking that the students were really gossipy. Mr. Bennett... Didn't you make me live on cabbage and tofu when I was working for you? Aaron paused as he didn't expect that one day he would shoot himself in the foot. Back then, you were fat, so I wanted to help you lose some weight. April felt speechless as Aaron could always find excuses for what he did and said, Mr. Bennett, she said, if you insist, just put a hundred dollars in my meal card. That's the amount I'll spend on food every month. One hundred. How can my woman spend so little on food? Never mind, I'll put 20000 in her card so she can have good food every day. Enough talking, let's go find Sylvia. April took his arm and dragged him toward the dorm building. 
Following her, Aaron glanced at her hand, which was holding his arm, making him smile with satisfaction. Quite a few people were standing in front of the building. Getting a closer look, both Aaron and April saw a handsome boy among the crowd. Ryan Rodriguez. He was an actor who had played a part in that movie. While thinking, he knitted his brows. At that moment, Ryan abruptly turned his head to look at Aaron. His eyes darkened slightly, but still he smiled and walked quickly over, saying, April, you're finally here. I've been expecting you for a while. Ryan, don't you know that she's a thief? Asked a female student. She stole money from one of our classmates. People are all talking about that right now. Yeah, some other people agreed. Nonsense, I don't believe it. Ryan frowned, raised his voice and said, I've known April since I was little. Don't I know what kind of a person she is? She would never steal money. That and I can guarantee with my own reputation. What? You've known each other since you were little? But she was caught red-handed. The surrounding people were surprised as they didn't think that April was Ryan's friend. April was surprised by his declaration as well. They were acquaintances who met while dubbing the same movie when they were much younger. She didn't even consider him as a friend yet, and she did not expect him to stand up for her like this, vouching for her with his own character. Who said she was caught red-handed? Sylvia and Grisman walked out of the hostel together dressed in their police uniforms. After questioning April at the police station, we found that some parts of the story did not add up, and she was most likely framed. This case concerns the reputation of a student, and we will not take this investigation lightly. Madison Martin from the broadcasting faculty stepped forward. What's not adding up? She was caught red-handed. There's a witness and concrete evidence, and those are hard facts against her case. April, are you trying to use your connections? Oh, right. I heard that you are quite close to Professor Connor. Are you guys? Aaron's gaze hardened, and before he could protest against this girl's malicious accusations, Ryan shouted, Shut up! Professor Connor is a respectable man. Stop defiling his name with your dirty mouth. Madison winced at the brutality of his words. I'm not the only one saying that. I read about it on the campus forum. I received news that Professor Connor and his wife will be filing a police report against the defamations online. Sylvia remarked sternly. April is the daughter of Professor Connor's schoolmate. Because of that, Professor Connor and his wife paid extra attention to April as she has no family in Rosewood City. They don't deserve to be insulted like this. According to the Defamation Act in our statute, posting these vicious comments on the internet can be considered as a punishable crime. All of you are educated university students and you should know better than to believe everything you read on the internet. That's true, someone whispered in the crowd. The crowd erupted in whispers. I, have you heard? An insider posted a thread about April's rich boyfriend. Apparently, he's a mega rich guy that's extremely handsome, too. Really? Isn't she single? Not sure. Someone on the forum also said that they saw him drop April off several times near the school, and someone else saw them walking around the night market holding hands. Didn't Ryan say himself just now that they're childhood sweethearts? Well, if that's true, then there's no reason for her to resort to stealing, right? Anyways, I saw a man carrying April off in an expensive-looking SUV earlier on. It's the same man who's standing next to her now. Oh, wow, he's really handsome. He is pretty good-looking, but I think Ryan looks more athletic and bright. I like boys with a healthy glow. Aaron had been listening to the chatter, and he was pleased with what they were saying at first. But it took a quick turn downhill. He took April by her hand and walked into the hostel. April was taken aback. He was holding her hand in the public eye. Sylvia was also in a daze. Judging by how intimate they were acting right now, it was hard to believe that they didn't sleep together last night. April is not an easy woman, though, Sylvia thought. She followed them quickly with a thousand questions burning in her mind. Ryan jogged after them with a grim face. Real, he shouted. April slowed down and turned to look at the beautiful boy running after her. The moment he stepped forward and vouched for her unconditionally, she had thought of him as a friend. I, Rye, thank you for coming down today to help me. You should head back. I still have to assist the police officers in their investigations. Real, Rye, Aaron couldn't stand the way they were addressing each other. He hadn't even started calling her a nickname yet. How could another man use the nickname so comfortably? Mr. Rodriguez, right? Thank you for looking after my girlfriend. Rye. They sound so close to each other. Why doesn't she just call me Ronnie? With a cold smile, he stepped forward to shield April with his tall and strong body, then said, 
Mr. Rodriguez, right? Thank you for looking after my girlfriend. We're busy now, so you can go back. April didn't know what to say. Is he an actor, too? He's pretty good at it. After some short eye contact with Aaron, Ryan smiled and said, I should be thanking you. I've known Rel my entire life. I should buy you lunch, but I've never heard that Rel has a boyfriend. Aaron felt a little annoyed. He was surprised to find that Ryan wasn't so easy to deal with. But still, he didn't take the latter seriously, no matter how good he was at talking. No need, he said. Normally, you need to make an appointment one month in advance to have lunch together with me, unless you're my girlfriend or family. It's all right, I'll just buy real lunch. Aaron felt that Ryan was so hard to deal with. He turned to put an arm around April's shoulder and then responded with, My woman doesn't need another man to buy her lunch. Darling Apricot, since he wants so badly to have lunch together with you, you should take him to the canteen of your school. I just promised to put 20000 on your meal card. It should be enough for you to buy his food. When she heard him call her Apricot, April's face blushed. And next, when he said 20000 she was speechless. Didn't she just tell him that 200 would be enough? The stunned Sylvia stared at the men, feeling that a war was starting. She was even a little jealous of April. Ryan was a popular young actor, and April actually knew him. If she knew Ryan, all of her friends would be so envious of her. 20,000? I don't think that's necessary. Ryan paused slightly, the smile on his face disappearing. Of course it's necessary. If she didn't complain, I'd buy your canteen. All right, Ryan, I'll call you later. April hurriedly said something as she really couldn't let them continue that conversation. While speaking, she winked at Ryan to signal him to stop talking. When Aaron saw her wink, his face turned cold. What? Winking at each other right in front of me? This is awful. All right. Ryan smiled, turned, and prepared to leave. As he took a few steps forward, Sylvia called his name suddenly. After that, she took out a notebook and a pen from her pocket, walked up to him with a bashful smile, and asked, Can you please sign your name for me? I like your movie a lot. You have many fans in our police station. Ryan paused briefly, then nodded with a warm smile. Aaron rubbed his forehead and said, Our police officer's so unprofessional now. You're working right now, yet instead of focusing on the case, you've grasped an opportunity to ask for a signature? Tell me your badge number. I'll make a complaint about you. Sylvia was honestly speechless. Was he really her brother? Don't be so mean. April sighed and said. Ryan quickly signed Sylvia's notebook, then said to April, Real, is he really your boyfriend? How can you tolerate him? I'd be driven crazy if I were you. Then he left. After he left, the area around Aaron turned as cold as the North Pole. April pressed her lips together, remaining silent. Looking at them, the policeman named Grismond didn't even dare to breathe loudly. Sylvia bravely interrupted the silence. Brother, don't you think you're acting very petty in front of your love rival? Who said that he's my love rival? He's not nearly as qualified as me. Aaron slanted his gaze towards April and he could see that she looked upset. He vaguely recalled that she called him mean. Don't be mistaken, Sylvia. Your brother and I are only pretending. We came to a consensus in the morning to put on this show to help my case and reputation, April explained. Sounds like a good plan. So you guys are only a pretend couple? Bro, aren't you taking this acting job too seriously? Sylvia looked at her brother. I can't help it. I take everything I do seriously. Aaron reached out and ruffled April's hair vigorously. So tell me about you and Ryan. Have you known him for a long time? Since you were a child. How come you never brought him up? What's your relationship with him now? You're not allowed to call him Rye from now on. And also you're not allowed to bat your eyes at him. April's hair was in a mess and her mind was as well. Aren't these things out of his realm of control? She thought. Enough. She peeled his hand off her head in frustration. He is my friend and I can do whatever I want because it's none of your business. I won't allow it, Aaron said bossily. Since you hired me to be your boyfriend, I will take this role seriously till the end. When did I ever hire you? Didn't you step up and choreograph this story on your own? Can I fire you? April said harshly. No. They just stepped into the hostel and she already wanted him gone. Aaron was highly displeased. She had an uneasy feeling that she just got herself stuck in a rut. Sylvia patted her shoulder with sympathy. Real? You shouldn't have agreed to go ahead with this plan. It'll be an impossible mission to get rid of my brother. April nodded her head in agreement and she was starting to realize how difficult it would be to get away from Aaron now. Suddenly, 
Riley Hendricks and Harry Carlson appeared together with director Patrick. When Riley saw April, she quickly pointed at her and said, Director Patrick, this is the girl who stole my money last night. April frowned. She didn't expect Director Patrick to be there, too. She had a feeling that they had a long day ahead of them. Director Patrick assessed April quickly and then introduced himself to Sylvia and Grismond. Are you here to investigate what happened last night? I only heard about the theft at the women's hostel earlier this morning, and the case has gotten quite a buzz. According to the school rules... If the case ends up implicating the school's reputation and standing, then we will either bring the case to the disciplinary council or expel her. Although the sum of money involved is only $5,000, we want to be thorough with the investigation as it concerns the reputation of a student here. There were some parts of the story that didn't add up, so we're back to look at the CCTV, Grisman said. Police officer, didn't you find the money in her bag last night yourself? Why do you have to look at the CCTV today? Riley asked hurriedly, her eyes darting around before resting on April. I don't care what tricks you pulled to make the police officers come over to reinvestigate the case, but I know you did it. How could you do such a thing after the level of trust Professor Sandler put in you? He even made you the MC for the Christmas event. You are a disgrace of the faculty. For my girlfriend's reputation, I don't care about the money. Are you sure that Professor Sandler will choose you if I don't get to be the host? April clenched her fists, gave a cold smile, and said, Your ability to make an immediate response is poor. You're so selfish that you framed me to benefit yourselves. You won't do it if you have any sense of group honor. Haha, ha, you're funny. The money was found in your purse. How did I frame you? You've done it, yet you refuse to admit it. I've never seen someone like you. Once Riley said that, Sylvia's phone started ringing, so she walked to the side to answer the phone. Erin walked to April's side, gently patted her on the shoulder, and said, Brill, don't worry. Last night, I've sent the cash to check for fingerprints. If you really stole the money, your fingerprints can certainly be found on the money. If you didn't, it'll be a different story. April paused briefly. Riley and Harry's expressions changed simultaneously. Harry forced a smile and said, You're joking. It's just a theft case. The police don't have the time to identify the fingerprints. I've pulled some strings to find a judicial authentication institution. They are authoritative, Aaron smiled and said. It cost me quite some money, but I don't care, as long as it can prove that my girlfriend is innocent. Hearing that, Director Patrick, who had been quietly listening to their conversation, glanced at Aaron. Aaron looked under 30, yet his vibe made even Director Patrick, who often took part in all sorts of social engagement, slightly afraid. You are, he said to Aaron. I'm her boyfriend, Aaron responded blandly. I was surprised when I heard people say that my girlfriend stole some money. When we became girlfriend and boyfriend, I gave her a black card, but she refused. I gave her a sports car, diamond watches as gifts, but she didn't accept any of them. No matter how badly she lacks money, she will always work to earn the money she needs. So her stealing $5,000 honestly sounds ridiculous. April sneakily glanced at Aaron and found that he was perfectly calm while talking. She even admired him for how real he made his words sound. Black card, sports car, diamond watches. Everybody can be an actor or actress nowadays, she thought. Sports car? Riley snorted and said, April, please stop kidding. Where did you find this actor? If you really have such a rich boyfriend, why do you always wear cheap clothes? And why have you been trying so hard to save money? Aaron frowned and responded with, Lady, not every woman is as venglorious as you are. She just doesn't want to show off. She doesn't need the whole school to know that she has a rich boyfriend. She wears cheap clothes because she wants to keep a low profile. I've bought her loads of expensive clothes, yet she just hardly wears them. She doesn't want too much attention. Instead, she just wants to focus on studying. After all, as the prettiest girl and the best student in your department, she's already being envied by many. If she dresses differently than the others, some unwanted rumors about her would certainly be created. However, even though she never wanted any problems, problems came to her. Hearing his long speech, April was shocked. You should be a lawyer, she thought. You can even tuck black into white. Amazing. He nearly made her believe that they had truly been maintaining a relationship for a long time and that she was really a low-key person. You? You're just bragging. Riley's face flushed because of anger. She said, Director Patrick, we never heard that she has a boyfriend. 
This guy must be someone she found randomly. Director Patrick had met all sorts of people in his lifetime. He was observing Aaron quietly and his gaze rested on Aaron's wrist. The watch he was wearing was not a visibly luxury brand, but he could tell that it would set him back at least a million dollars. All right, stop squabbling. Didn't the gentleman say that he sent the dollar bills to the forensics? And if April did it, her fingerprints will be all over them? The results are out, Sylvia returned after the call. Without missing a beat, she said, The report states that there were many fingerprints on the notes, but none were from April. Isn't that strange? What? What's so strange about that? Maybe she was wearing gloves. Riley stuttered guiltily. She didn't expect April's boyfriend to show up, and she didn't expect for him to be so relentless in the investigation that he would actually spend money to send the bills for forensic analysis. Another thing, Sylvia smirked at Harry. The officer said that you were the witness last night. According to the records, he said that you saw April entering the room suspiciously when you were returning to the hostel. The time was roughly 6.30 p.m., but I saw you walking into the building at 6 p.m. through the CCTV tapes. You two stay on the third floor, don't you? Didn't you take half an hour to get from the first floor to the third? Did you take half an hour to get from the first floor to the third? I... I was playing with my phone while heading up, and that's why I was walking slowly. Oh, right. I also stopped on level two to talk to a classmate, Harry hurriedly added. I told the police that I saw her around 6.30. I can't be sure of the exact time, so it was an estimate. Sylvia raised her brow. Are you sure? How long did that conversation last for? Harry nodded her head. About 20 minutes or so, I'm sure. Sylvia's lips curled into a smile and she opened her notebook and looked at her notes. Look at my poor memory. I remembered incorrectly. You did walk into the hostel at 6.30, according to the videotapes, but now you're saying that you took a leisurely stroll and stopped to talk to a friend? This means you got back to your room at about 6.50, and there's no way you could have seen April entering Riley's room. According to my conjectures, you made a false statement. Harry and Riley looked sick and Harry was stunned for a while before shaking her head vehemently. No, I didn't. I... I just... I remembered wrong. Sylvia's face was serious. But you said you were sure when I asked you just now. Are you going to go back on your word again? It's not like that. Harry's head was spinning from Sylvia's interrogation. She felt anxious as Sylvia locked her gaze onto hers with intensity. She didn't have the wits to formulate a reasonable explanation quickly now. Riley, on the other hand, was looking on with anxiety, and she didn't dare to say anything since she wasn't the witness after all. Maybe I saw her at around 6.50. I didn't pay attention to the exact time, but I'm sure it was between 6 to 7. You said 6.30 yesterday, and then today you changed your statement to 6.50. Do you know you can be charged with obstruction of justice for changing your statement so frivolously? Sylvia's tone was getting more and more high-strung. Riley quickly chipped in. Even if she keeps changing the time, it doesn't change the fact that April stole my money. I'm just getting to that. We're going to have to talk about your conflict of interest in this incident. According to the officer, April's going to be the MC of the Christmas event at your school. I also heard that there is only one available spot, and you got into a fight with April during the nomination process. If April really does get charged for theft, then she won't be allowed to host the event anymore. Naturally, you would become one of the top candidates to take on the gig. All in all... We have reason to believe that you set her up to frame her, Sylvia concluded. I'll sue you for slander. After a brief pause, Sylvia continued, After all, since it happened last night at 11 o'clock, many people have heard that April stole someone's money via WeChat and forums. April's boyfriend believed that some people have slandered her on purpose, so he called the police an hour ago. By now, the police have found out that the account which spread the rumor belongs to you, Riley. After hearing that, Director Patrick slowly turned his eyes to Riley and Harry. He knitted his brows. Riley managed to stay calm while Harry's face started paling a little. April didn't quite believe Sylvia before, but now she was stunned. Normally, Sylvia may seem to be a little unreliable, but when handling a case, she was like another person, like a lawyer in court. What surprised her more was that Aaron had actually called the police because someone tried to slander her. She had no idea about that. She quietly turned to him, but he didn't sense her gaze. He slightly curved his perfect lips into a smile and then said, Madam, based on the information you provided just now, if I send my lawyer to sue these two for slander and defamation, could you start an official case file? Of course we can. If you don't mind going through all the trouble, you can spend some more money to check your girlfriend's purse for fingerprints. Like... The fingerprints of these two? 
Sylvia shrugged and said. Harry shivered, nearly falling to the ground. Aaron stared at her blandly while continuing, If we're really going to engage in a lawsuit, Miss Hendricks, I'll feel sorry for you. Because April 1, you'll be charged with perverting the course of justice. That might have some bad influence on your future career. And if April wins, she'd be the largest beneficiary, while you wouldn't be able to benefit from the whole thing at all. Are you insane? Do you have to check for fingerprints and start a lawsuit for $5,000? Riley panicked. I won't press any charges, all right? I'll just bear the loss. Bear the loss? Aaron laughed as if he had heard a funny joke. I don't think you're clear with the current situation. It's not about you letting us get away. Instead, it's about me suing you for fabricating facts to slander my girlfriend. $5,000 is nothing. But you can't buy your reputation with 5000 As for fingerprint identification, we don't need to do it because I now have enough evidence to make you fall in disrepute. Don't forget to contact your parents. You'll get a court summons soon enough. No, please don't do that. Harry couldn't stay silent anymore. He burst into tears and said, I admit it, I lied. I didn't actually see anything. Riley put the money in April's purse when April was taking a shower. She stole the key to April's dorm a couple of days ago from one of her roommates named Annie. Harry, don't you try to frame me. Riley screamed. When did I do that? You told me to lie. You're jealous of April because she's going to host the Christmas show. You said that she probably slept with Professor Sandler and that's why he picked her. You also said that the boys in our department recommended her because she's been flirting with them all day. I'm also jealous of April's MC gig and thought she was awful like you said. I was so wrong. I thought that if the others saw her as a thief, I'd be in the running. Harry said while trembling. April, please forgive me. Don't sue me. I studied so hard to come to college. I'm going to graduate next year. If you sue me, my life will be ruined. You never considered that you were putting my future and studies on the line, April said coldly. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Harry said in a panic, apologizing furiously. As long as you don't sue me, I'll do whatever you ask. Sylvia cleared her throat and said, Well, Director Patrick, looks like we've got to the bottom of this case. We have to take Riley and Harry with us for interrogation. Sorry for troubling you, officers. We might have wrongly punished April if not for the both of you. You two are a disgrace to the school. How could you use such lowly methods to get what you want, instead of putting your heart and mind to the books? Especially Riley. This incident reflects your poor moral character, and we will have to expel you. As for Harry, Director Patrick reprimanded, Although Harry made a false statement, he did come forward to confess to his wrongdoings. I don't think we have to expel him. We can let the police deal with you accordingly, April said. You don't seem like a bad crook. I'll detain you for half a month. Sylvia fished out a pair of handcuffs and put it around Riley in a flash. You two, follow me back to the station. No, please, don't expel me, please. April, please, I'm sorry, just let me off this time. Riley was crying hysterically and grabbed at April's hands desperately. Before she could reach April, a big hand intercepted her grasp midair and pushed her toward Sylvia. Aaron warned her. Your posts online were put there to ruin her, but you want her to forgive you? Come on, let's go. You're already acting like this in school, so what kind of evil deeds will you do once you graduate and enter society? Sylvia and Grismond were escorting them towards the car. Before leaving, Sylvia shuffled up to April and whispered, Hello, sister-in-law, and welcome aboard my brother's pirate ship. April shivered. Needless for Sylvia to say, she knew she would have trouble getting out of this situation. Director Patrick, I hope you can make an announcement to the whole school about the truth of what happened here. Help April clear her name, Aaron said seriously. Of course, don't worry about it. Director Patrick was overwhelmed by his dominating aura. I would also like to make a suggestion, Aaron gestured towards the ceiling above them. I think you should install CCTV cameras along the corridors. There are so many people walking in and out of this building, and if you had cameras installed along the corridors, then this wouldn't have happened today. We didn't install cameras for the sake of the girls' privacy. I didn't think something like this would happen. But I'll relay your feedback to the school administration, responded Director Patrick. Thank you, Aaron said nonchalantly. Since the case is closed now, you should leave the women's hostel. If not for the special circumstances today, males are not usually allowed in the building. Director Patrick said with a smile before making a move himself. Let's go. I'll walk you down, April said and looked around. It was Monday, and most students were in class. She knew that the housekeeping lady was a strict woman.